Did you know that skin cancers occur at different rates in different racial ethnic groups in America? The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention published data on cancer rates, including that of skin cancer. They break the data down into six groups. The cancer rates for white, non-Hispanic Americans, for white Hispanic Americans, for Hispanic Americans, for Black Americans, for American Indians and Alaska Native Americans, and for Asian Americans and Pacific Islander Americans. The skin cancer rate for white, non-Hispanic Americans far outpaces the skin cancer rate for any other group. It's five times higher than the rate for American Indians and for Alaska Native Americans. It's six times higher than the rate for white Hispanic Americans and for Hispanic Americans. It's 21 times higher than the rate for Asian Americans and for Pacific Islander Americans. And it's a whopping 28 times higher than the rate for Black Americans. Now, if you think these particular racial ethnic categories are a little problematic because they conflate skin color with race and ethnicity, and they don't really capture the scope of the different groups in America, well, you'd be entirely correct. But that aside, why are there these stark differences in skin cancer rates among these various groups? Well, a large part of it has to do with how the skin reacts to sun exposure. So first, let's take a look at why skin cancer occurs. Then we can start to unpack the role that race and ethnicity, well, more specifically, skin color, plays in the whole picture. Okay, cancer. At the most fundamental level, cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. Cells typically have a certain lifespan. They operate in cooperation with other cells around them within a given tissue type, and after a certain amount of time, they typically undergo apoptosis, or cell self-destruction, and make way for new cell growth. As humans reach adulthood, the rate of cell growth and the rate of apoptosis are approximately equal. Cancer occurs due to a failure in cell signaling related to cell growth. This can happen in two ways. The signaling for cell growth can be kicked into overdrive, and or the signaling for apoptosis can be disrupted. So you end up with a lineage of rogue cells that are out of control. These cells form a mass called a tumor. So what does the sun have to do with this? As UV radiation comes into contact with the DNA of skin cells, it can stimulate mutations in a gene called TP53. TP53 produces a protein called P53. P53 plays a role in DNA repair. Now, imagine that there are dozens of genes that get damaged in a particular skin cell after UV radiation exposure. The P53 protein would repair those damaged genes. But if one of the damaged genes is TP53 itself, then the repair process for that particular cell could be severely compromised. In instances like this, typically other proteins that help to initiate apoptosis would be engaged and the cell would be destroyed. But if those genes also get damaged by the UV radiation, well, that's when things start to go off the rails. Without a good DNA repair mechanism and without the ability to enter into apoptosis, the cell can start to divide unchecked, leading to the formation of a cancerous mass. If that's how skin cancer forms, then what does skin pigment have to do with it? The skin pigment molecule eumelanin, which is the primary molecule responsible for skin color in humans, it can do at least three things to protect the skin from the harmful effects of UV radiation. First, the eumelanin itself can act as a physical barrier for an individual cell. It can form something of a protective cap over the nucleus of a skin cell, preventing UV radiation from damaging the DNA. Uh, some of the UV radiation would get absorbed by the eumelanin. Some of the UV radiation would get scattered after coming into contact with the eumelanin. And of course, some of it would still get through to the DNA inside the nucleus. Second, Eumelanin in the outer skin cells can protect deeper skin cells from sun exposure. Okay, our skin is broadly composed of three layers. There's the outer layer called the epidermis. There's a layer beneath that called the dermis. 
Then there's a third layer beneath that called the hypodermis. When cancer forms in the skin, generally it forms in the epidermis layer because that's the layer that is most frequently contacted with the UV radiation from the sun. But if we start to think of the skin as a three-dimensional structure with depth, then an additional aspect of sun exposure starts to arise. Now, the epidermis itself, it's not just a single row of cells. It's something on the order of 6 to 20 cells thick, depending on where you look. Skin cells, regardless of how much eumelanin they contain, can filter out a certain measure of UV radiation and protect skin cells that are deeper within that particular layer. Skin with lots of eumelanin can filter out as much as 90 to 95% of the most harmful UVB radiation, compared to only about 75% that gets filtered out in skin with very little eumelanin. The outermost cells will always experience the most UV radiation, but if those cells have high levels of eumelanin, then very little UV radiation will penetrate down deeper into the epidermis. On the other hand, if skin has very little skin pigmentation, then the outermost epidermal cells are at risk, and since those don't do as great of a job at disrupting UV radiation, it means that the next few rows of cells will also be exposed to significant and harmful levels of UV radiation. Third, and finally, when UV radiation comes into contact with skin cells, even if it doesn't directly impact DNA, even if there's a protective cap of eumelanin over the nucleus, the UV radiation can still cause DNA damage. How? Well, as UV radiation irradiates skin cells, it can cause the production of a class of harmful molecules called reactive oxygen species. These can be molecules like O2- or hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, or even something like a radical hydroxyl group, which is just an OH that isn't bonded to anything else. These are all super reactive, and they can enter the nucleus and really mess with DNA. Free radicals can disrupt the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA, or even change the structure of a DNA nitrogenous base itself. There is some evidence that eumelanin may actually play a role in binding up these ROS molecules so that they don't cause these kinds of problems. So regardless of the role that eumelanin plays in protecting the skin from harmful UV radiation, what does seem clear is that the more eumelanin that's present in skin, the lower the incidence of harmful mutations and cancer occurrence. For more information on the genetics and the cell biology of the skin pigment system, be sure to check out the other videos in this Evo Ed series. And in the meantime, get outside, enjoy the sunshine, but take appropriate measures. Use sunscreen, regardless of how much eumelanin your skin may have. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.